Hi girls, I know it has been a few days since I've hopped on to share any of my food with you guys. So I thought today I'm making some Swedish meatballs. I know, it's not Middle Eastern, but I do like to switch it up and I love to try different foods. This is a favorite in my house. I absolutely love them, my girls love them, and I serve them over some egg noodles and you can throw on a fresh vegetable with them like broccoli or a fresh salad and you can have this on the table in 30 minutes and your family will love it. I don't know if you ladies have ever been to Ikea, um, but you know how they are famous for those meatballs? Well, guess what? These taste better than those, okay? So you have to give it a try. Super, super easy to make. So let's hop in and I'm gonna show you exactly what we do. You're gonna need uh, two pounds of ground chuck, two pounds of ground chuck. You're gonna need some fresh parsley, two tablespoons of chopped parsley. You're gonna need two eggs. You're gonna need some panko breadcrumbs. These right here, I'm gonna show you what they look like. These are a little different than regular breadcrumbs. They have a little bit more texture to them. Okay, so the uh, panko breadcrumbs, salt, pepper, some nutmeg, uh, ground nutmeg, some garlic powder, and of course, allspice. Allspice is in like everything, I think. Um, and I don't know if I mentioned two eggs, and you're gonna need two eggs. So this is what we, I, I wrote down my measurements so that I, I could kind of glance over so that I don't screw you guys up. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna chop up the fresh parsley, and you're gonna need two tablespoons of chopped parsley. And we'll put it in the bowl here with the meat in about two seconds. And I have a pan ready over here because what we're gonna do is once we make the meatballs, we're gonna brown them on all sides for about five minutes and then we'll set them over on a plate with some paper towel to let them drain. But this is just to brown them up and then we're gonna make the sauce that goes with it. You guys know how I am about like sauces. Literally, like I can, I can sit with a spoon and eat it out of the pan, just that with nothing else in it because it has heavy cream in it and you know like I, I like this kind of food. I wish I didn't. So let's chop up our fresh parsley. We're gonna do it till we have it finely chopped. Oh, and you're gonna need an onion. And did I grab an onion? I hope I have one sitting here. Let me go grab it. I think I did take it out, but I didn't put it on the counter. Somebody had told me that the volume on the video was low the last time, and I apologize. I hope it's better today. I'm trying to you know, speak a little bit louder so you can hear me. Um, and uh, I wanted to give you guys an update too. I know a lot of you have been messaging me about Cindis. Um, she is in um, intensive care unit still, and she is, I guess, in quite a bit of pain, unfortunately. But if you could all continue to pray for her and support her, it would mean very, it would mean a lot to me. So thank you for your continued prayers for her. Hopefully, she'll be moved to a regular room soon so that. Um, I can go visit her. I really want to give her some time uh, just to heal right now. So anyways, let's continue to chop our parsley. And you're going to do it till it's kind of fine. You don't want big, big, big pieces, okay? So I just go in and keep chopping it. And I didn't measure. I'm, I'm guessing how much two tablespoons is, but you can measure if you feel better about it. So two tablespoons of the parsley. For one minute, I'm going to move my pan and put a bowl over here so you can see what's going on. So I'm just gonna take that ground meat. And of course I have gloves on because I'm a weirdo and I have to have gloves on. And I'm gonna put the meat in there. Now I'm gonna take that parsley and I'm gonna put that in the bowl with the meat. Okay. My mother-in-law's probably having a stroke that I'm using this cutting board, but sorry, mom. All right, that's okay, no big deal. All right, let me grab the onion. I think I have an onion. I don't, I didn't grab an onion. Okay, I gotta pause for one second because I think my dementia is kicking in and I forgot to grab an onion. So hang on one second. All right, I got the onion. I set it over there and forgot where I put it. Like five minutes later, I forgot where I put the damn thing. Seriously, I'm losing it, you guys. Okay, so now you're gonna take your onion and your onion has to be finely, finely chopped, okay? And sometimes I feel like if I use too much onion, it's a little bit overwhelming, but this is a rather small onion. So get one that's kind of small to medium, not a really big onion. And you can use the whole thing if you want. So I'm just gonna chop up the onion really fine. 
really fine. Um, you know what's cracking me up, you guys, is that a couple people on this group page on Facebook think that I am Yuma and I started the page. I can promise you I am not, and I did not start the page. So thank you for all the messages thinking that I did it, but I am not responsible for the page. You guys are sweet to think so, but I'm really glad they did start it because you women are amazing. I, I, I just love it. I love how, how supportive and loving you are to all the women on here, and I really appreciate it. Okay, so I'm just trying to chop this onion really small. I still have the other half to go. Like, I should pause so you don't have to watch me chop the onion because how boring is this? All right, that's kind of small. I want a little bit finer. I'm gonna do the other side too. Do it all together. I hope everybody had a great Mother's Day. I had a beautiful Mother's Day. Robbie and the girls took me to Andiamo, my favorite restaurant, and our favorite waitress there, um, Rochelle. She's amazing. If you ever go to the east side Andiamo, on this side of town, ask for her. She's amazing. Uh, she had the entire table set with flowers, a bottle of wine, and some sweets for my kids. She's just an incredible person. Love her. All right, now my eyes are starting to water because this onion is so strong. So you want the onion to be fine because if you go ahead and you put it in the meat mixture now, like big pieces, when you go to fry the meatballs and stuff, it's gonna they're gonna fall out and it's gonna be too big. If you don't have an onion handy, you could use um, minced onion. That would work, but fresh is always better, guys. If you have fresh ingredients, it's always better. Now this onion to me, this is just a medium sized onion and still to me, it looks like a lot of onion. So I'm not sure I'm gonna use it all. Okay, oh, I'm dying here. This onion's killing me. I heard if you take a slice of bread and you put it in your mouth while you're chopping onion, that your eyes won't water. But how ridiculous am I to look with a piece of bread hanging out of my mouth? So I guess I'm just gonna suffer. All right, I'm, I'm chopping. And then I heard people with blue eyes have it more sensitive eyes and that they water more than people with brown eyes. Is that true? I don't know. But I can tell you what, it depends on the onion. My eyes are, I'm tearing up, kids. I'm tearing up. I need a tissue. Stay up. All right, still chopping. It's gonna be a, be a minute, right? All right, I'm not gonna use all this onion because I think it's too much onion. All right, so use like a medium size onion so you don't use too much onion. I'm just gonna get rid of a little bit of it. I'll show you how much I'm using. I just wanna chop it up more fine. You could also do it in a food processor. Just give it a rough pulse in a food processor to save yourself time, but you don't want it to be watery, okay? So sometimes when you use a food processor to make them really fine, it, it gets it like liquidy and you don't want that. I'm gonna show you kind of how much I'm using here. All right, jeez, my eyes. Okay, so I'm using about that much right there. That's a small to medium sized onion chop. I'm getting rid of a little tiny bit of it. Bye bye. Just a little bit. All right, let's pour that in here. All right. Now, the original recipe did not call for garlic. Are they crazy? Like, who doesn't put garlic in a meatball? That's just like, that's that's just wrong. Okay, so I'm putting garlic in because just like butter, garlic makes everything better, right? Gives it so much more flavor. I despise peeling garlic. I know you can buy them already. Um, peeled and everything, but um, I think it tastes better when it's fresh, right? All right. I'm kind of scared because I hear something outside and what is that noise? I don't know what it is. Hmm. Sounds like a machine or something running. Okay. Anyways, I guess I'll find out. The end of the world's coming. I'm about to find out. Okay. Put it over there. I'm gonna do one more. So I have four cloves of garlic. I should have had this all done so you guys didn't have to watch me do this part. I know it's like, it's long enough. These videos are long enough without watching chop everything. You guys, suddenly I am absolutely dying. My nose is running, my eyes are watering. Maybe I'm allergic to onion. Oh my gosh. All right, give it a nice fine chop to your garlic. 
Make sure you chop in it fine. You're not leaving big, big chunks. You think I'm kidding? Look at my eyes. They're, they're completely red and watering now from that onion. Crazy, okay. And my nose is friendly too. All right, just chop in that. And then to this, you're gonna add your bread, your panko bread crumbs. Like I said, they're a little bit um, more coarse than regular bread crumbs. They have a little bit more texture to them. I'm gonna go ahead and pour those in. That's three quarters of a cup of panko bread crumbs. I just added three quarters of a cup of panko breadcrumbs to the meat mixture. Now, let's say you're making your um, meatballs and when you go to mix the meat up, it feels like too moist. It's not, it's not sticking together good. Go ahead and add a little bit more breadcrumb, little by little until it's where it's not sticking to your hand. So keep your breadcrumbs on the side in case you need to add more because we're gonna add two eggs and I know sometimes you get those jumbo eggs that's going to add more liquid than like this medium size egg right here, right? So keep your breadcrumbs handy just in case you have to add more to keep those meatballs, um, you know, to give them some form. All right, because your egg's a binder and so are the panko breadcrumbs. All right, so here I chopped up those, that garlic really fine. Go ahead and add it in there. I'm going to add my two eggs in there. One. And you know I keep all the stuff in my sink until I'm done and I clean it up from there. There's two, give my hands a little rinse. All right, now we're gonna add two, um, we're gonna add, um, what am I adding, what am I adding? I'm gonna add a teaspoon of garlic powder, one teaspoon of garlic powder. Just trying to remember, thank God I have my little list here. Okay, a teaspoon of garlic powder, good. I'm gonna add a teaspoon of allspice. One teaspoon of allspice, which you know I love the smell of allspice. One teaspoon of allspice. We're gonna add a half a teaspoon of ground nutmeg. Half a teaspoon of ground nutmeg. There we go. That smells good. I don't use nutmeg too much, like at Christmas time sometimes. Okay, so one uh, half a teaspoon of the nutmeg. We're gonna add a quarter teaspoon of ground pepper. Quarter teaspoon of ground black pepper. If I can get it open. Yeah, it's like, I don't wanna break my nail. Okay, quarter teaspoon of pepper. That's plenty of pepper until you make the sauce, then you'll probably wanna add more. We're gonna add a teaspoon of salt. And always, you can always cut back on the salt if you're trying to watch the salt, but salt really does give your food a great flavor. Okay, so one teaspoon of salt. Now let me make sure I put everything in that I was supposed to. I did, okay? So we have two pounds of ground chuck. We've got three quarter cup of the panko breadcrumb, two tablespoons of fresh chopped parsley, a teaspoon of allspice, a half a teaspoon of nutmeg, um, I have about a third of a cup of chopped white onion, fine, finely chopped, and a teaspoon of garlic powder, a quarter teaspoon of black pepper, and one teaspoon of salt and two eggs, right? So now I'm gonna go in and mix it, and if it's too wet, I can always add some more panko, all right? But I think it'll be good. So I'm gonna go ahead and mix it, and you don't wanna over mix it. So you just wanna mix it enough where everything's nice and blended and you can tell that it's bound good together and it's gonna hold. Because the next step is to form your meatballs and then you're gonna brown them in that skillet and then we're gonna make the amazing sauce. So you don't wanna to put too much breadcrumb either because if you do, it's not gonna be moist. The bread, the, the meatballs are gonna become hard and they're not gonna have moist flavor, you know? So you don't wanna over mix them either. Okay, this seems pretty good to me. It's a little bit, it feels a little sticky, just slightly, but I think that's because it's not mixed all the way yet. So I'm gonna keep mixing until all the ingredients are mixed together and then I can judge a little better. Okay, let me try to make a meatball and then I'll be able to really tell. Ava is starving, she's in the other room and she, her, she was like, how long are the meatballs gonna take? Are you gonna make a video? Cause she doesn't wanna wait. Okay, here's one meatball, let's see. 
Now, you can roll these small or big, all right? This is about the size that I do them right here. I don't know if you, if you can see that really good. Okay, that's about the size right there. And that way they cook all at the same, you wanna make them the same size, kind of uniform, so they all cook at the same time. You don't have some pink and some done. It's very important to make them all uniform in size, right? So that they cook evenly. So that's good, I like this meatball. It's holding together nicely. Those measurements worked out fine. I don't really have to add any more. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna form the meatballs and I will be back to show you how they are and then we'll brown them and then we'll start to make the sauce and I'll show you how to do that. So I'll be back in just a minute. Take my glove off. Okay, I am back. I finished rolling all the meatballs. I made 24 meatballs out of that mixture. There's 24. So now I'm gonna take some butter and I'm gonna put it in this pan, about two tablespoons of butter, and I'm gonna take two tablespoons of olive oil and just go around the pan. They're mowing my lawn, that's what that noise was. Okay, so put that in the pan with the butter and then you're gonna turn it on to like a medium high heat. Let that, that butter melt in with the oil and then you're gonna brown your meatballs and you're gonna brown them until they're almost cooked through. Try not to break them open and peek. It's gonna take, you know, it's gonna take a little bit, maybe five to six minutes for them to brown and cook because even if they're not cooked all the way through, this is what I do. A lot of times they'll cook them all the way through and they just put the sauce over them. I cook them till they're almost cooked through and then I put them in the sauce and I let them finish cooking in the sauce. I just keep it on low and I keep stirring the, the sauce over the top of them, let them kind of cook slow. Delicious, delicious. You're in no hurry here, right? So just brown your meatballs on all sides. This butter is getting nice and brown. And I'm sure you all know what I mean. I'm gonna use these tongs here and I'm gonna let this oil get just a little bit hot because I want it to brown right away, start browning right away when I put it in the pan. Of course, there's oil involved, so it's gonna be just a little tiny bit, you know, messy. You're gonna have to clean your stove really good because it's gonna splatter unless you have one of those fancy screens you put on the top. And then for the sauce we're gonna make, you're gonna need, please forgive me to all you healthy people out there, I am sorry and please forgive me but you're gonna need a stick of butter. You're gonna need some beef broth, Worcestershire sauce, really important and so, so good. Some Dijon mustard, um, heavy cream, I know, heavy cream, a little bit of flour, salt and pepper, okay, to taste, and that's it. But let's start by browning them. I'm just gonna take the meatballs, you can use your hands, it doesn't matter, and put them in there, and I'm gonna brown them on all sides. And then I'll take them out. I'm just gonna use my hands, it's a little bit easier. Now that they're all rolled, I don't mind it so much. And put them in the skillet and try to get that butter all over so they get nice and brown. Try not to move them right away because if, if they're not cooked on the bottom and you try to move them, it's gonna pull them apart, okay? So just try to get that butter all over that pan. This pan has a little bit, you might have to do it in batches, this pan in the middle kind of has like a bell shape to it. So it goes like this and down. So the oil kind of doesn't stay in the middle. So I keep having to kind of move it around. I don't know why I'm using this pan, but anyway, put it in there and you might have to do them a few at a time. I think that's enough for now. And I'm gonna let them brown, give them a good coat with that oil so they don't stick too much. I'm gonna leave it then I'll just turn them over and brown them on all sides. When I'm all done, I'll come back, I'll show you exactly what they look like browned, and then we'll start our sauce for it, and we're done. And then you just cook your noodles and serve it over noodles with some broccoli, and you're all set. So I'll be back in just a minute to show you what they look like. All right, the meatballs are completely browned, and honestly, I cooked them for about 10 minutes um, so that I was pretty sure they were almost cooked through. And I didn't break them apart because I like them to look pretty when I serve them. So here's what they look like, all browned, really pretty. They held together really nicely. So the measurements that we used were really good. Sophie's now home and she's also starving. So, <laughs> and she loves this. So now we're gonna make the sauce for the Swedish meatballs. And you can use the same pan, and I know there's a little bit of oil in there, which is fine. And there's also gonna be little pieces of onion that came out of those meatballs. That's perfect, that's what you want, it's fine. You wanna have big chunks, just maybe a piece here and there and it's gonna make that sauce taste even better, right? All right, now here comes the part where you guys crucify me. 
and all you healthy people out there probably are sick and tired of me, but we're gonna add a whole stick of butter. I know, a whole stick of butter. We're gonna put a whole stick of butter in that pan. Oh, you can half this recipe. Like if you just want a small batch, you could totally cut it in half, but my family loves the sauce. Of course we love it because it's horrible for you, so we like it. So I always make a lot of sauce, but you could totally cut it in half if you wanted to. So the whole stick of butter is gonna go right in the pan. And I'm gonna turn it on and let that butter start to melt a little bit. And to that, we're gonna add six tablespoons of flour, regular white flour. And the flour is gonna be the agent that helps the sauce get thick and bubbly. It's gonna make it fantastic, right? But you have to make sure that this part of the recipe with the flour you have to do it at this point. Like once you put the butter in and it starts to melt, you're gonna add your flour. You don't wanna add it at the end. If you forget, you need to start over, okay? Because if you try to add it at the end, it's gonna be all clumpy and it's not gonna work out, okay? So we're gonna let the butter melt in there first. You can say hi if you want. Sophie's making a guest appearance. Thank you for putting your lunchbox away. She's trying to put her lunchbox away. I'm gonna break up the butter here so that it melts a little bit quicker. All right, now it's starting to melt and I'm gonna add that six, the six tablespoons of flour, okay? To, I really have to get my plastic spoons back because these make so much freaking noise when I use them. All right, so let's add our six tablespoons of flour. One. And I have to count, otherwise I'll forget. Two, three, four, five, six. Okay, six tablespoons of flour. I'm just gonna rinse that off really good because I think I'm gonna need that measuring spoon again. Now, you're gonna see that that butter and the flour is gonna start to get like a brown color, and that's perfect, that's exactly what you want. It's kind of toasting off that flour, and this is what's gonna make it nice and thick. Oh yeah, it looks perfect so far. You're making like a roux, like a, a thickening agent for your sauce, okay? And this is what it kind of looks like, let me show you. Just like that. I need like cameras overhead, I need one on the side so you guys can see what's going on. Maybe one day when I'm a professional. Okay, now we're gonna do uh, four cups of beef broth. I have one open, four cups of beef broth. And usually in one of these containers, there's actually exactly four cups. There's two. <clears throat> when you see that this butter has kind of turned a nice brown color <clears throat> and your flour's all mixed in, there's no clumps of flour in there, that's when you wanna add your liquid. So here's two cups. Two cups, now we're gonna add two more cups of the beef broth. Now let's say that you make the sauce and at the end, it's not thick enough. Don't freak out, we can fix it. Let's see how this turns out and if we need to correct it, I'll tell you how to do it. Even if it turns out perfect, I'll still tell you how to do it. Okay, so now we're gonna add the other two cups of the beef broth. Oh yes, this sauce is so incredibly good, you guys. How can it not be good? Butter and cream, you had me at hello. Come on. All right, so we're done with the flour. Let me put that on the side. And now here we go with our heavy cream. I know you guys, I'm not even trying to pretend I'm healthy. I'm just, I just like food too much. All right, so now our two cups of heavy cream. I don't know why I smell everything. I just do before I use it. Okay, two cups, this is a two cup measuring cup here. Two cups of heavy cream. I'm gonna get rid of the spoon and I'm gonna use a whisk, all right? A wire whisk and I'm gonna just stir as I pour it in. <clears throat> and now it's gonna turn to like a beautiful tan brown color. And we still have more things to add to this beautiful sauce, okay? Just mix that all in. You can get all those bits that are on the bottom from frying the meatballs mixed into your sauce there. Those brown bits at the bottom are adding so much flavor. I can't wait to eat this. My stomach is growling. 
just the smell of the meatballs cooking. Now, we're gonna add two tablespoons of Worcestershire. I absolutely love this stuff. Oh, the smell, I love it. I don't even know how to describe the smell. It's like an A1 with soy. That's how it smells to me, but it's amazing, okay? So we're gonna do two tablespoons of this. I always do just a skitch for because I'm a freak about Worcestershire. And a lot of people can't say it, Worcestershire. Worcestershire, okay, there we go. One, two tablespoons. I could take the lid off and make my life a little, I'm doing a little skinch more because just because I like it. Okay, so two tablespoons of Worcestershire. Two tablespoons, okay? Sorry for the noise outside. They decided that today was the day they would mow the lawn after a month, so okay. Um, two teaspoons of Dijon mustard. Get a nice Dijon mustard. Is this camera blurry? Did it go blurry? There we go, uh-oh. Did I salvage it, guys? All right, so I didn't do anything else. I did the two, tea, uh, two tablespoons of Worcestershire. Now I'm doing two teaspoons, two teaspoons of Dijon mustard, okay? Of course this guy's right outside my window mowing the lawn, right? Of course he is. Why wouldn't he be? Two teaspoons of Worcestershire. This is gonna give it a really nice tangy flavor. I love this sauce. There we go. All right. And now you're gonna just add salt and pepper to taste. So you know me, I'm not really great at measuring, right? So I'm just gonna do like a sprinkle, a couple sprinkles. You can, you can add salt, but you can't take it away. So be really careful with the salt, okay? Because you can always add more if you want to. And Ava, can you open this for me, please? My nail is like fragile. My helper, Ava, Miss Ava. Okay, now go ahead, you can help. Go ahead and sprinkle some in there, okay? A little bit more, skinch more, that's good. Just a couple shakes of black pepper, or if you have a grinder, just a few passes of that. Now, we're gonna let this, what's gonna happen, this sauce is gonna cook for a few minutes and it's gonna start to thicken. Let me turn it up a little bit. I'm gonna put it to a medium high heat and it'll start, as it starts to cook, it's gonna start to thicken. And as it starts to thicken, that's when you'll put your meatballs back in there and you'll turn it to kind of like a medium low and leave it. Just cover them and leave it for a little bit until the meatballs are surely cooked through, okay? So that's all I'm doing here is waiting for the sauce to start to thicken up a little bit. And as she's stirring it and the heat's working on it, it'll thicken up. So I'll be right back in a few minutes and I'll show you what the next step is. I'm just gonna drop those meatballs in. And what I wanted to tell you was, if at the end, let's say, you know, if, if there was too much liquid in the pan and the sauce didn't quite thicken up, the easiest trick to do is you're gonna take a little bit of your sauce in a measuring cup, like a small measuring cup. Go in, scoop a little bit of your sauce out so that it's warm and it's in this cup. Add a tablespoon or two tablespoons of cornstarch, mix it together, dump it back in the sauce and it will thicken it, okay? That's, a, that's an easy way to fix it. So don't throw it away if it doesn't thicken up on you, but this should be fine. We'll be back and we will show you what's gonna happen next. Okay, the sauce is really starting to thicken up. It started to bubble and I just kept stirring it and it's really nice and it's getting really thick as it's cooking. Now, you wanna give it a little bit of a taste right now and make sure that it, the flavors that you want are there. Sometimes you need to add a skinch more of this, skinch more of that, I'm gonna tell you in a minute. Fantastic. I went in and I added about a teaspoon more of the Dijon and a couple splashes of that Worcestershire just to bring up the flavors a little bit more. Now it's perfect, I really, really like it. So taste it. If you feel like it needs a little bit more flavor, add a little bit more Worcestershire and a little bit more Dijon and mix it and keep doing that until it has that flavor you like. Now all I'm gonna do is take these meatballs, put them in here. I'm gonna cover it, crack the cover and just let them simmer in the sauce and I'm gonna let them go. If you're in a hurry, make sure you cook them more through when you're frying them. If you have time to let them simmer in that sauce, that's the way to go. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna put them back in here covering, and then I'm gonna start my egg noodles. I'm gonna get out my favorite pot, fill it with some cold water, a dash of olive oil, bring it to a boil and cook these noodles up, drain them, and then we're all good to go. So I'll be back. 
All right, the noodles are all done. They cooked about eight to nine minutes, all right, in my favorite trusty pot. I always try one. I take one out and make sure that it's al dente or just soft, right? And I'm gonna drain the water. Ooh, I get the facial at the same time. It feels amazing. That's what I need. I need a good facial. Okay, here we go. Drain as much of the water out. Get as much of that water out. That's why I love this pan because I can keep the lid on and hold it and drink all that water. Okay, noodles are done. They look fantastic. Just a simple egg noodle. They do not take long to cook. This is what it looks like right here. Egg noodles. You can get any kind of wide egg noodle that you want. You can put it over anything you want, I suppose. Any kind of noodle or mashed potato or anything. So it's nice and bubbly. There's a beautiful golden color to my Swedish meatballs right there. Now all that's left to do is to try them, okay? So here we go, here's the true test. I should get a tester. Okay, here we go. Now I'm just gonna, I'm gonna put a little bit of noodle just so I can taste. You always wanna taste it before you serve it, right? And I'm gonna get a meatball. Oh, here we go, look at that, you guys. Oh my God. This is just a little taste. And then always sprinkle a little bit of fresh parsley on the top before you serve them. Okay, so kinda looks like this. Can you see that? All that steam coming off. It's gonna be super hot, but I can't wait to try it. Now, here's the test to see if that meatball's cooked through, right? That's why I let them cook really low and slow and fry them. Oh yeah, it's cooked absolutely perfectly. Perfectly cooked through. It's just firm enough. It's got a nice texture to it. Let's see how it tastes. That's the true test, right? Ooh, I better turn this down. It's boiling like crazy. Here we go. Hey, Sophie. Here we go. Oh my God. Come here, girl. <laughs> Are you ready for the final taste? Come here. <sighs> Is it hot? It's a little hot. Okay. It's also good. It's very good. Well, I don't know. I guess you'll have to find out. <laughs> this is one of your favorites. Blow on it before you bite it. Take a bite. <laughs> is it good? Can I have another bite, please? You can finish that little oh sample God. if you want. That was just to show them. That's yeah. it, guys. Swedish meatballs. Put them on a nice plate. Spoon over the meatballs with that beautiful gravy. Top it with a little bit of parsley. Serve yes. it with some veggies, and you're good to go. Or don't serve it with anything. Just serve that. It's a beautiful meal. I'll post some pictures. I love you guys. Have a great night. And we might do a little bonus video. I haven't decided yet. So I'll see you soon.